In today's video, we're going to be creating this animation. More than the animation, it's about learning the technique that can be applied in various areas for different styles and hopefully you get creative with it. In the default scene, we're going to go ahead and hit X to delete the default cube. We're going to search for a plane by pressing Shift A and then hitting S10 to scale it by 10 units. After that, we're going to go ahead and add in a modifier and search for the array modifier and change relative offset to constant offset and change the distance on the X to zero and make the distance on the Z equal to 0 0.02. So now you can see how close we have two layers and now we can increase the count to something like 50. Now you can just select your camera and then Alt G, Alt R, then G Y, R X 90 and then G Z. Just move it up about halfway and then G Y again and there you go. So now when you look through the camera, you should be able to see something like this. Now we can hit N, view, camera to view, and then just scroll back till we see about everything. Now we can also go to the camera settings and change the viewport display passport out to one. That way we don't see anything outside the camera view. Now since we're done positioning our camera, we can also go back to this menu by hitting N and de-checking camera to view and then end to hide that. After that, we can go ahead and click this button to go to the shaded viewport and then just click and drag from this junction to open a new window. We can change this window to the shader editor and hit end to remove the side panel. Now we can select our plane, go to the materials and add in a new material. Now in this material, we're gonna delete the principal PSDF, go down to the settings in the materials tab and change the blend mode to alpha clip and the shadow mode to none. After that, we're gonna hit Shift A and search for a mixed shader, as well as a transparency shader and a diffuse shader. After that, we can place the transparent shader in the top socket and the diffuse shader in the bottom socket. And now everything's going to be transparent if the factor is below 0.5 and it'll be opaque if it's above 0.5, assuming we actually put the shader into the surface. So now we have to control the transparency and we're gonna do that by searching for a Voronoi texture and also searching for a color ramp, placing the distance into the factor and the color into the factor of the mixed shader. So right now we can see that there's holes being cut into the Voronite texture. Since that's not what we want, we can go ahead and just reverse the sliders in the color ramp and there we get our circles in the Voronoi texture. Now if you want the circles to be a little bit more full, what you can do is add in a wave texture in between the Voronoi texture and the color ramp and then you can go ahead and change the scale to something really small like 0.015. Now you can also go ahead and switch off the overlays so that we see just the circles and what we want is only circles that are present within a smaller sphere to be present. So to do that, we're going to create a mask. So we're going to search for a gradient texture and we're going to search for a color ramp. We're going to take the color from the gradient texture and place that into the factor of the color ramp, but we're going to change from linear to spherical. And also remember that the gradient texture right now, if you control shift click it with the node wrangler switched on, you'll see that it starts from the center or the side of the base plate. But we want it to start from the center of our entire object. So in order to do that, we're going to control T with the gradient texture selected and the node wrangler switched on to get the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. If the node wrangler is not switched on, you can add in these manually and switch from generated to the object. After that, since the gradient is now perfectly at the center of the bottommost plate, we need to lift the gradient up. And in order to do that, we're going to just change the location on the Z axis till it comes to the center. In order to make sure that it's perfectly at the center, you can hit one to go into the front view, but then hit five just to go out of the orthographic view. Place this roughly to the center and make sure that you get a symmetric shape about the center. So this seems pretty symmetric. 0.5 seems like a round number as well. That would make sense. So we're just going to type minus 0.5 and know that this is the center of the gradient. However, the gradient goes all the way to the top and we don't want it to be like that. We want the sphere to be completely contained within this region. So what we could do is we could select our plane, go back to the modifiers, increase the count to 100 and decrease the distance to 0.01 just so that we get it more compact. Make sure that we control shift click the color ramp so that we actually see the output after the color ramp and then just decrease it till our top becomes very small or just a dot. It's all right. Now that we have that 
setup and we have a sphere right there you can see that our sphere was evidently not perfectly centered since the gradient is tiny to almost nothing down there and is present a little bit up here however that difference is fairly tiny and won't make too much of a difference so we will leave it at that itself so now we can go ahead and control shift click this mix shader so now we actually have to make this gradient or this mask actually affect the Voronoi and wave textures that we had set up over here so in order to do that we're going to search for a mix RGB we're going to change it from mix to multiply change the factor all the way to one place this color in the second socket and the color from the color app of the Voronoi texture into the first socket and then we can place the output of the mix RGB into the factor of the mix shader so right now you can see that we have a sphere but it's far too small so what we can do is we can just increase the black over here decrease the white over here till we get a few of these spheres showing up in our wave texture we can go ahead and just decrease the size of the act or increase the size of the actual Voronoi to get even more spheres so now that we have our spheres we can go ahead and control shift or control t on the voronoi to get the mapping and texture coordinate nodes however since we already have a texture coordinate down here we don't need this texture coordinate node so we're gonna hit x to delete and then plug the object into the vector and you can see how the size decreases as well because our planes were scaled quite a bit so let's just decrease the scale a little bit to maybe four and now to actually make this into a looping animation we can actually see that this the top bit of this sphere is getting cut off which means it's not completely within bounds so in our gradient texture mask we'll just decrease this a little bit till we make sure that yes nothing at all is getting cut off so in order to make this a looping animation what we're going to do is we're just going to go to frame zero and set all of our animation defaults so let's go to the output properties here change the frame rate to 30 frames per second change the output to whichever folder you are saving it in change the end frame to 300 so that it's a 10 second long animation change the file format to ffmpeg video with the encoding container changed to mpeg4 and the output quality to perceptually lossless now at frame 0 for the rotation of the Voronoi texture and we're going to hit i over the rotation then we're going to select the mapping node go to frame 300 and change x to 360 as well as the z to 360 and then hit i again then we're going to go down to the timeline hit t and change it to linear also we're going to go to the plane back and change it to frame dropping because this will lag a little bit so let's control shift click and we can see how the animation currently is going now in case you don't like the way the turning is currently happening what you could do is you could actually remove the keyframe from z so we'll just go to the summary go down and you see the z values we can just take the keyframes and we can actually take the keyframes for the y as well just hit x delete keyframes so now it's going to rotate only on the x-axis and while it's doing that we can actually have the camera rotate around this but before we get the camera to rotate it we'll actually tilt the camera a bit so let's select our camera go to the object properties here change the rotation on the x to something like 105 and just bring it down on the z-axis and then let's also zoom in quite a bit in order to zoom in we're just going to hit n camera to view and zoom in and then again n deselect camera to view so now we can see what the animation looks like it's a bit too high so we're just going to lift the camera on the z-axis a little bit and there we go so now that we have this set up we need the actual lighting so right now we have one default light and it just hit alt g to clear its location and now you can go to the actual light properties and change its color so we'll give this one maybe a bluish color like that let's also go to our render properties and switch on blue let's go to our world properties and just change the color to black and now we can go ahead and duplicate our light so shift D duplicated on the X axis. Just move it a bit to the side. Let's switch on overlay so that we can actually see it. Then let's just G Z a little bit. Go to the light properties here and change this color, maybe something greenish. And then let's shift D X, move it over to this side and change this one's color to something a little reddish. Let's take our original light and just grab around the Z axis. So if this works for you, great. What I'm going to do is, so this is what we currently have. And I feel like the layers on top are just becoming far too close. So we can give it quite a little more wiggle room. It'll render a lot faster. So we can go back to our modifiers and just change the count back down to 50 and increase the spacing to 0 0.02. Now it should play back also a lot faster. So that's the basic effect. You could change this by adding in more lights. You can change the type of material to a little glossier material. You can switch on screen space 
reflections you can add in a background and most of it just remains your personal preference so we could also just change the background color to something that suits our color more rather than having it as complete black it just could be a very dark value of whatever color you are currently using and that's basically it in case you want something else as well you can just search for an empty plane axis select our camera and then select the empty and then hit ctrl p set parent to object then you can select the empty go to frame zero hit i rotation go to frame 300 and then hit r z 360 and then hit i rotation and then down here t linear and now if you look at it you get the same animation as when it was rotated on the z-axis of the texture coordinate but with this you could actually change the position of the lighting and if you have multiple lights you could get a different feel as you can see in this particular animation so hopefully you learned something from this video and you can apply this technique in various areas in various ways but until next time stay creative